Less than a decade after his first acting role, Lloyd Avery II went to prison for a double homicide, and then his cellmate ended his life. It was a tragic end for an actor who, according to the people he worked with, could have been a leading man if his life hadn't spiraled out of control. The movie was 1991's Boys in the Hood. The film was groundbreaking, but Avery's role wasn't the largest. In fact, he was only billed in the credits as Knucklehead No. 2. Unlike the violent role he played in the Oscar-nominated film, Avery wasn't a gangster from the hood, at least not when he was cast. He'd grown up near the Los Angeles neighborhood of Baldwin Hills, which was sometimes referred to as the Black Beverly Hills. He was raised in a home with loving parents, a pool in the backyard, and what appeared to be a bright future. So what caused the life of this promising actor to spiral so wildly out of control, ultimately leading to his death? Avery attended Beverly Hills High School and brushed up against the sons and daughters of the rich and famous. According to King Magazine, he was friends with the son of Quincy Jones, Quincy Jones III, and Smokey Robinson's daughter, Tamla. Avery did well academically, but after graduation, he drifted until he got a shot at acting. His first foray into Hollywood came when his friend John Singleton tapped him to be in Boys in the Hood in a small but pivotal role as the killer of one of the main protagonists. Ricky! Singleton cast Avery in his follow-up film, Poetic Justice. Casting director Robbie Reed told the Chicago Defender, Lloyd had a presence that I think was undeniable. When people refer to that it factor, it's really intangible. You just know when you see it. Jackie Brown, the casting director for Boys in the Hood, believed that with more acting experience, Avery could one day be a leading man. Even as Avery's behavior became more and more erratic, he racked up assault and other charges, and the makers of the film Lockdown threw him off the set for unruly behavior. He continued getting accolades. The writer-director Roger Roth, who cast Avery in his final role in Shot, told the Chicago Defender he was, quote, one of the best actors I ever worked with. By the late 1990s, Lloyd Avery II had fully embraced the kinds of characters he'd been portraying on screen. His younger brother, Che Avery, told King Magazine, Instead of just being a Hollywood-like studio gangster, he was living it. The actor moved into a gang-heavy neighborhood called The Jungle, allegedly became affiliated with the Bloods, and tattooed the word Jungles above his left eyebrow. Fellow actor Malcolm Norrington told King Magazine that Avery had gone from being, quote, kind of meek during the filming of Boys in the Hood, to missing auditions for other acting jobs and spending more time with the Bloods. In addition to acting, Avery was also trying to jumpstart his music career as a gangster rapper using the name L.A. Deuce, and he was also working on a script about gang life, which may have played into his embrace of this subculture. Quincy Jones III, with whom he shared an apartment, recalled that Avery began spending more and more time with local gangsters who, quote, sent him on these crazy missions from which people weren't sure if he would come back. And then, that fear came true. In December 1999, the Los Angeles Police Department charged Lloyd Avery II with the murders of Annette Lewis and Percy Branch. Investigators alleged he'd killed the pair over a drug debt that previous July. He was alleged to have shot both of them with a 45 caliber pistol. According to King Magazine, the shooting occurred outside in broad daylight. Lewis had five bullet wounds, including one in her back, while Branch was mortally wounded by a shot to the stomach. After the killings, Avery spent time as a free man. In between the time of the murders and his arrest, Avery even acted in two films. But in the year 2000, a judge sentenced Avery to life in prison. While incarcerated, he became religious, earning the nickname Baby Jesus. But when he tried to convert his cellmate Kevin Roby, who was allegedly an avowed Satanist, conflict ensued. Roby choked Avery to death in September 2005 and was said to have even performed some kind of ritual over the remains. At the time of his death, Avery had reportedly been continuing his work on the script he was writing about gangster life. <laughs>